Events are what makes JavaScript really awesome. When someone does something like type in a text field or click something, click a button, scroll, submit a form, this is what makes JavaScript really interactive. Now there are really two primary ways we can do this. We can create an event listener, which we are going to cover in a later video, or we can create HTML based events, which is what we're going to stick with for now because it is a nice transition into JavaScript binded event listeners. So forget I even said that last part, let's just start with a simple button. So let's go ahead and create a button in here. We have a button, class could be btn, btn primary if you're using bootstrap or something like that. And let's just make sure this is a regular button. So type is equal to button. And this is going to say, click me. All right, we got a boring button in here. And when I click it, yeah, it does nothing. But what we could do is we can use on click. So if you remember using this in HTML, or if you remember sort of learning about it or seeing it, this is where we're going to use on click. Now there are several other events. There's on submit, on click, so on and so on and so on. There's tons of them. I couldn't possibly go over all of them, but the on click event is the one we're going to use to trigger some JavaScript. So let's go ahead and put this on separate lines. So this just looks a little nicer. And on click, we want to execute some JavaScript function. So let's create a function called click me, put parentheses in there. And we also need some JavaScript in here as well. So script function, click me, and that matches this one up here. And it's not going to do anything at all. And it's not going to take any parameters at all. It's just going to console log click. And that's it. Nice and simple, but watch this. I can spam this over and over and over, and it just keeps getting clicked. And so this is really the base behind a click event, is anytime someone clicks on the button, it's going to execute some JavaScript, a function called click me. Now we could actually get a little fancier with this too. We could say var total clicks is equal to zero. Let's do this. Total clicks is equal to total clicks plus one. Alternatively, if you come from other languages, it might be easier for you to do total clicks plus plus. That's the same thing as doing plus one. And let's do console.log. You've clicked this button total clicks times. And just so we can see this on one line, so it looks a little nicer. You've clicked this button total clicks times. So you've clicked it one time, two times, three times, four times. Let's give this a refresh. You clicked it one times, two times, one times. I like that two times, three times, four times, and it goes on and on and on. And so that is a click event. And really what JavaScript is all about is events, because why have any JavaScript running if someone is not going to have some event going on? If you don't need user interaction, you probably don't need JavaScript at all. So let's go ahead and make this a little more interesting. Let's create a very basic calculator. It's going to be basically someone adds one number to a number that already exists. So let's go ahead and start this from scratch. So we've got an input field. Type is going to be a number. Class could be like form control because we see that a lot in bootstrap. And let's go ahead and give us some basic styling. So padding 30 pixels, font size 30 pixels, color blue, border one pixel solid blue. And that should look fine enough. That is way too big. Let's make that just a wee bit smaller. There we go. So we've got a number field in here. Okay, now we need a button. So let's go ahead, create a line break. And let's add a button. So we've got a button in here. Class is equal to, I don't know, btn.btn primary, just like in bootstrap. We're not using bootstrap, not yet. So that's not going to do anything, but we could also style this if we wanted to. I don't know. Let's add 100. So whatever the number is in number is going to be added to the number 100. So it's really half a calculator at this point because we're not giving two numbers. We're just giving one and saying we're going to add 100. Now let's make this a little funner and let's actually make this page do something different. So let's do, uh, let's throw an H1 in here. The total is, and then we could say span and then whatever that total is going to be. So currently when we load the page, there is no total. Let's see what this looks like. We've got a number field in here, which looks pretty disgusting, then we could add 100, and the total is yeah, nothing yet. Let's add some JavaScript to make this fun. 
script, we always have to add 100 because that's, I guess, what we're doing. So let's say var num is equal to 100. It's just sort of how this example is rolling out. Next, we need to create some sort of onClick feature. So uh, onClick is equal to, let's call it calculate. And we put that on our button. So now we could do function calculate. It's going to take no parameters because it's going to automatically grab values from the page. So now we need to grab this input field, which has a class of form control. It's the only one in here. So we can just do a regular query selector instead of query selector all. So var input is equal to document dot query selector and select it by its CSS class. Var value is going to be input dot value, but let's typecast that as a number. Make sure it's always a number. And then we could do no if value. So if it's actually a number, we're not going to get that far into this. I think that's going to pollute this lesson a little bit, but we could also do something like var total value is equal to value plus 100. Well, that 100 already exists in a variable called num, right? Right there. So now we have a total value and we have to select this fella. So let's create a query selector to grab the H1 and then let's create another query selector to grab the span. I mean, we could just select the span because it's the only one on the page, but what if it wasn't? If it wasn't the only one on the page, this could be a little trickier. So let's create var H1 is equal to selector. We know that this is the only one on the page, so we can just use regular query selector H1. And then we can do var span is equal to H1 dot query selector span. Now that we have that in there, we can say span dot inner text is equal to whatever the number is. So let's put the total value in there. And let's see if Caleb has made any mistakes. Console log is not complaining about anything. Let's put a number in here. Let's put the number nine. Oh, yep. Look at that. It can't find something. Con cannot set property inner text of null. Oh, it doesn't know where to find that. So now we debug, and this is a big part of coding as well. I'm actually glad that some of these mistakes come up so that you can actually see how someone does this kind of debugging. So we have a function in here and we want to grab this H1. So let's just grab that. And when we type H1, oh, look at that. It's because it's not the only H1 on the page. Huh, well, we could do one of two things. We could get rid of this one or we could do it the JavaScript way and we could do query selector all. But because this returns an array and we know all about indexing and we know that there's at least two H1s in there and we want the second one, let's grab one. Because remember, computers start counting at zero, not the number one. Let's try this again. Let's just get rid of that. And let's put the number 23. Oh, look at that. And now we have somewhat of a calculator. So we can put any number I want in here. And it's just going to add 100. What if I don't have anything in there? Ooh, ooh, nothing. Okay, what if I tried to put the name Caleb? Oh, it's a number field, so HTML doesn't allow me to put numbers or letters. It only wants numbers. So cool, that's a little bit of security there. So let's do zero, 01. What happens there? It's still 101. And so now at this point, we have somewhat of a working calculator prototype. There's nothing in the console log. We're doing it all on the actual page. And now our page is becoming a lot more dynamic. This is where it gets a lot a lot funner because you can actually see your progress at this time. Now, going back to our function, we're not actually returning anything. We could, but because it's an event listener, it doesn't need to return anything. It just needs to execute a bunch of code. And that's what we did. We said, hey, run these six lines of code, but you know, wrap it up in a name called calculate so that we can just type calculate in here. So really we packaged it up in a nice Amazon box and we said, hey, this box has a sticker on it called calculate. And inside of this box is six commands. And when you open that box, the calculate box, there are six commands and there are six items. And so that is the basis behind JavaScript events. Now there's a much more JavaScript way of doing this called an event listener, but this is a very good segue into that. Now what I would like you to do is try this out. Create an on click event that uses a function. Again, it does not need to be super complicated. Don't feel like you have to impress anyone with it. It just needs to do something, anything. It could even console log if you wanted it to. If you get stuck along the way, hey, there's a comment section down below. Don't forget, I am here to help you. And if you're feeling rather confident that you have this down pat, let's move on to a bigger project.